It's 1984. A 12-year-old boy falls asleep on the dusty floor of a shared two-bedroom apartment in India. Little does he know, he will one day become the CEO of one of the biggest tech companies in the world, Google. Now you might be wondering, how? You see, in a few short years, his father will take a gamble that will cost the family their life savings. The young boy's name is Sundar Pichai. He would go on to reinvent Google, challenging his superiors and creating one of their most impactful inventions to date. Sundar developed an interest in technology very early on. His life changed drastically in 1982 with the purchase of his family's first rotary phone. It showed the power of what's possible with technology. The phone also made life a lot easier. At the time, he would have to board a bus and travel for over an hour to a hospital to get results for his mother's blood tests. He'd wait for another hour in line only to be told the results weren't ready and to try again another day. Now with one simple call, he was able to avoid the nearly four hour long journey, replacing it with a mere 10 minute chat on the phone. The more access my family had to technology, the better our lives got. So when I graduated, I knew I wanted to do something to bring technology to as many others as possible. The boy's interest in technology became more specific when he was introduced to the world of semiconductors. He began to read books on an inventor of the technology, William Shockley, and the work he was doing in Silicon Valley. He knew where the action, the development of his interests were taking place. He just needed to get there. It was with a deep passion and promises of the future that he got to work. Sundar began by earning a degree in metallurgical engineering from IIT. It wasn't smooth sailing right off the bat. My first year CGP was so bad, I had to work hard to make up for it for the next three years. But ultimately, after hunkering down and working hard, IIT set him on a course that would have huge impact on his future. It wasn't only the place where he met his girlfriend, Anjali whom he would go on to marry in 2008 and share two children with. It's also where he was awarded a life-changing scholarship to Stanford University. Sundar's hard work and determination were beginning to pay off, propelling him one step closer to his visions of Silicon Valley. But getting this scholarship wasn't the hardest part. Physically getting himself from India all the way to America would prove to be much more challenging. His father, Raghunatha, needed to come up with more than his annual salary in order to make the trip possible for his son. 1,000 American dollars. He first tried getting a loan, but when that fell through, he resorted to the last possible option. Unwilling to let this moment pass his son by, Raghunatha took the money from his family's savings. Sundar was taking this opportunity one way or another. And so, in 1993, after his long-awaited first-ever plane ride, suitcase in hand, Sundar landed in America. When Sundar Pichai took the reins as CEO of Google in October 2015, Google's stock price sat at just $36 per share. Seven years later, it had reached $96 per share, netting a 15% annualized return for shareholders. That kind of return is why Pichai is considered one of the top CEOs of our time. However, like most other tech stocks, Google has gotten hammered over the last year, down close to 30%. Now, what if I told you another asset class that nearly matched Google's stellar performance, but that's actually remained strong even through 2022? This asset's prices have appreciated nearly 14% per year over the last 26 years, beating the S&P 500 by a stunning 131%. You might be surprised to hear, but that asset is contemporary art. Now accessible to you, thanks to our sponsor Masterworks, the art investing platform. While many investors' portfolios were getting crushed in 2022, Masterworks investors realized nine returns, earning investors 13.9, 35, and 10.4% on the last three. What Masterworks does to help you get into this asset class is genius. They buy high-end art pieces, securitize them, and allow you to buy into them with shares. There's usually a long wait list to join Masterworks, and offerings can sell out in just minutes on their platform. 
However, because we've partnered with them, you can skip that waitlist right now by clicking the link in the description below. The weight of his father's financial risk on his heart and mind, he emerged from the plane. Looking up at the Californian sunshine, he knew he was stepping another foot closer to his dreams. Until something hit him. Culture shock. He was astounded to find that a phone call back home would cost him $2 per minute. And then there was a backpack. He needed it for school and came across one with an alarming price tag. $60. A normal price for a decent backpack, but for Sundar, $60 was the equivalent of a month's worth of his father's income. So you can understand Sundar's shock when he came across that first backpack. Eventually, he found a much cheaper one through an online bulletin board. He was not going to take this opportunity of his for granted. He was going to succeed in America and his perseverance and passion would carry him through this next chapter. As Sundar walked into one of the numerous computer-filled labs at Stanford, he was reminded of the importance of people's access to technology and its effect on their lives. As he spent hours working in the labs, the internet was developing all around him. In 1995, Sundar graduated from Stanford with a master's in material science and engineering. Much to his parents' disappointment at the time, he did not return to Stanford upon graduation to obtain a doctorate. Instead, he kept his sights on his goal of working hands-on in the tech industry. He got a job working in engineering and product management at Applied Materials, an American semiconductor chip manufacturing corporation. He was now a working professional in California, more specifically in Silicon Valley the destination he spent so many days and nights dreaming about reaching. But he didn't stop there. It's April Fool's Day and Sundar, dressed for success, walks into the biggest, most life-changing interview of his career. But something big within the company is taking place today. The launch of Gmail. Sundar isn't aware of this and upon finding out, passes it off as one of Google's infamous pranks. Google had been known to be a fan of April Fools and had pulled pranks on the general public through fictitious advertisements. To name one of many, there was the mental plex prank of 2000 that asked users to think of what they were in search of while staring at an animated GIF, with several funny error messages appearing as a result. Thankfully, when he admits this, it doesn't come as a disadvantage to him. Quite the opposite. His ignorance leaves Google's senior VP of People Operations remembering Sundar to have intellectual humility, a trait he's looking for in the perfect candidate. And as a result, Sundar is hired. He will join Google as the Vice President of Product Management and Development. His hard work is finally paying off. He's entering into a position that is better than anything he had dreamed of before. You know, I did feel like when I first went to Google, I was like a kid in a candy store. But he wanted more. He continued to climb his way up within Google, working hard and taking every possible opportunity for growth that came along. You know, another thing I've noticed over time is you will have many, many, many opportunities to reinvent yourself. And so, uh, you know, so I think, you know, it's worthwhile taking risks and trying to do something you're really, uh, you know, excited by. His first role was as the leading product manager for the Google Toolbar, a feature that streamlined Google's use through its placement in the top right corner of competing web browsers. Despite his experience, he was now a small fish thrown into a big pond and was surrounded by very knowledgeable people with many years in their positions. For many, this would put them off their game, but not Sundar. Working with people who made him feel insecure was right where he wanted to be. And so uh, there are many, many times I've felt uh, working with people in a group. Am I doing enough? Uh, these people seem much better than me. And I think, I think that's an inherent part of learning. Sundar felt that if you are secure in what you're doing, that would mean you're comfortable. And comfort means you're not pushing yourself enough. Some point in your life, you know, you have to work with people where you feel a bit insecure. Right? That's essential because that means you're working with people who are better than you and who are pushing you. 
His mentality of always being better than he was before and pushing himself past comfort stuck with him as he progressed within Google. Sundar made his first wave when he approached the company's co-founders and made a proposal. He saw an opportunity for growth, a gap in their approach when compared to the competition. Google needed its own web browser, but would the cost outweigh the benefit? CEO Eric Schmidt seemed to think so when Sundar proposed this addition to the company. He dubbed the idea too costly. Without everyone's full support, Sundar was left with only one option, to try again. So he got back to work, crunching numbers and making a case for the new browser. And when he made his second presentation, that was it. He was given a green light. They were going to war. After several years of hard work with Sundar being directly involved in the development of the new software, Google Chrome was released to the public on Labor Day of 2008. They had finally joined a browser war that had been waging for years between Internet Explorer and Mozilla Firefox. And soon, they would defeat them both. By May of 2012, Chrome had overtaken both of its rivals and became the most popular web browser in the world, eventually with over 65% of the market. It would also be announced as the new browser for Android devices that same year. Sundar's risk-taking and persistence were not only paying off for him anymore, but was translating into success for Google as a whole. Chrome OS had also come to life along with a line of affordable laptops now known as Chromebooks. The waves Sundar was making were getting him noticed by upper management, but unfortunately for Google, also beyond the confines of the company. It was around this time that he began to be incessantly sought after by Twitter for high-ranking positions within the microblogging company. Thankfully for Sundar, Google was not willing to let him go offering him a significant financial incentive to stay right where he was. Sundar became one of the most powerful tech executives in the world when he was put in charge of Android and began overseeing Android OS on a global scale. This power move put him in a position to do something he'd been wanting to do since he was a teenager in India, bringing tech to more people globally. And along came Android One. Within a year, it would distribute a billion devices worldwide, and in October of 2014, Sundar became the product chief of Google and Android OS. He was now overseeing Google Search, Maps, Play, Android, Chrome, Gmail, and Workspace. But soon, everything had the potential to collapse for Google. They were at risk of losing Sundar again only now to their competition, Microsoft. In 2014, Sundar was widely publicized to become their new CEO. But Google had big plans for him and were unwilling to let him slip away from their grasp. Again, they offered him a hefty financial incentive to stick with them. And then, on October 2nd, 2015, they would make him the new CEO of Google. His many years of persistence and risk-taking had paid off. In July of 2017, he joined the board of directors for Alphabet, Google's parent company. And in 2019, when Google's former CEO stepped down as CEO of Alphabet, he took over the role. He was now the chief executive officer of both Google and Alphabet. Never one to give up or let fear dictate his decisions, Sundar followed his dreams to the very top. He was even awarded the third highest civilian award in India in 2022. As of February 2022, he was recorded as having a net worth of $1.3 billion. Today, he and his wife, college sweetheart Anjali, reside together with their daughter, Kavya and son Kiran. Sundar Pichai, who started his journey sleeping on the floor of his family's home in India, now lives in a $40 million mansion. The home boasts a tennis court, miniature golf course, swimming pool, and a guest house. His father's gamble had finally paid off. This is the story of how a young boy with big dreams living in a humble life let his perseverance and hard work take him on a journey to become the CEO of one of the largest tech companies in the entire world. Be bold, 
take risks, be okay with being uncomfortable, but most of all, be persistent. And if the first attempt you don't do it, you know, you can try again and, you know, things tend to work out in the long run.